Hi, I'm CJ Elmberg with TransWest Trek Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. So we've got a special trailer we want to show you today. This is actually going to be one of our four display trailers at the upcoming 2023 National Western Stock Show. So behind me is a 2023 Cimarron Steerwalt Signature Series. This is an absolutely loaded trailer, beautiful setup, uh, just nice product when it's all put together. Um, these air ride cattle trailers over the years have evolved quite a bit from where we started out with the 28 foot with one traveling gate, one fixed gate, with a four foot front tack. I mean, again, they've really, really evolved. We really won't put any trailers like this in inventory uh, unless it has that air ride suspension. So we'll visit with you about that, walk you through it. It's got a ton of options, so bear with us, but we wanna show everything to you and how awesome this trailer is and set up for you to actually go and enjoy and use. So before we get into it, we'll go ahead and take a look at the drawing. I'll show you some specs on the actual trailer itself. 30 foot on the floor. What we did is we've gone to a six foot front tack room on these type of setups. This is the standard eight foot wide on the signature series setup. We go with the six four. Uh, there's really not a lot of need for this trailer being any taller unless you just want it to be a little bit taller. But for inventory purposes, we build the six four tall. Uh, but then that leaves us with a 24 foot stall area with two traveling gates. So again, as we start going through this, um, again, bear with us. There's a lot of extras, a lot of options we've done to these trailers, uh, but this is a really well set up trailer. This is how a lot of customers uh, actually want these trailers set up when we actually do a custom build for them. This is a lot of the stuff that we do. Uh, of course, we throw on some extras with it being the actual display trailer at Stock Show. Um, but again, a very well set up trailer. So very first thing as we approach the underneath the gooseneck area, you're going to notice the enclosed front end. This is an awesome feature just because it's going to keep everything behind here nice and clean, especially when we're dealing with, you know, this type of weather this time of year, that type of splashback from your pickup. Uh, I think it also gives this trailer a nice finished look to it, sleeks it up. Uh, also, you know, as, as wind kind of gets behind your truck, it wants to catch the front end of that trailer. So I think from an aerodynamic standpoint, it does help. It gets that air pushed away from the trailer. But with this roll-up door, real simple to use. Roll it up. Like I mentioned, everything behind here stays nice and clean. So very first thing is to the right of the jack is you're going to notice your spare tire. These are Alcoa rims. We'll show you those, but you've got a matching Alcoa to go along with that. Located directly above that is actually gonna house our battery. Uh, so it's our aluminum battery box. Has a battery disconnect as well. So one of the last things you're gonna do when you unhook this trailer and walk away from is reach up there, turn that off. That way if we accidentally leave a light on somewhere within this trailer, it's not draining this battery. Over to the right is actually our air ride system. So it's all self-contained. That compressor's right there in that box. Very easy to operate. You turn it on, you put it in the raised position, and you pull this trailer. Anytime, whether you have cattle on this trailer or even run an empty, we recommend, hey, go ahead and put that air ride on, put it in the raised position, and go. We'll talk more about that air ride system itself, but right there is that compressor. So again, self-contained. You don't have to have uh, uh, air source coming from your pickup or coming up with another option there. It's all right there in that box. We've done some how-to videos on operation, turning it on, turning it off, very quick, about a minute long videos. We can send you those as far as that's concerned there. But this setup here, normally the spare tire's located to the left of the jack, but we moved it over to the right. Just because this is kind of some wasted space, we wanted some hooks. So it's a nice big four utility hooks there. That is aluminum powder coated. Uh, those are big and deep. They sit off the wall, but they're really tall as well, spaced out nicely. That way, if you're dragging some big hoses, some big cords to shows that those type of items, you can actually throw them on the hooks, keeping them out of your tack room, and again, having a little bit more kind of space. Below that is gonna be actually a generator bracket. So we put that bracket there for you. Uh, this, this way you can go ahead and put an, an onboard or a, a portable generator right there. Now. You know, we recommend you either need to vent it down and out yourself. Um, you gotta watch the heat from those portable generators. So when you get to a show, you can roll this door open, fire it up, and we'll walk you through some of that that we put on this trailer as well. 
But again, we move that spare so we could do those type of items over to the left hand side. And then you cap it off with the equalizer electric over hydraulic jack itself. It's a single leg, but boy, believe me, on this nice of a trailer, to be able to push a button and up and down it goes, it makes a world of difference. And this system here too, is this has the manual override. So if you get in emergency situations, you can actually pump this on or off. There's some systems out there that you do not have that option, but Cimarron goes ahead and, and puts that on there. Again, roll that down. You know, typically your cab lights uh, blocked by the front of the truck. So we put a light switch right here and underneath we put this 16 inch awning light underneath this gooseneck as well. So again, you have light coverage. I mean, you can roll this up if you need to get some items out of, out of that uh, enclosed front end, you need to get to the spare, you need to get to the air ride controls. It's all right there by having that light. Now on these Cimarron's, they all have a longer nose just by the way they design them. So an 8-2 long nose, where a lot of the competitors will do a 7-6 to 7-8. Uh, when we do that enclosed front end there, we make this nine foot. So it's a longer nose. That, I really like that because if you run in a long box truck and you drop that tailgate, you're still gonna have space to get between that tailgate and the front end of that truck. It's not right up against it. So they actually lengthen a little bit more. They can do a 9-6 nose as well if you wanted to maybe house a little bit bigger portable generator, there are those options as well. And I'm gonna take a step back because you can kind of see right there, we went fully polished on this trailer. So you have the stainless polished sheeting all the way down. We're gonna have the polished extrusion on it being a signature series. This is an absolutely beautiful trailer. When it's all shut up, you have the ramps all put up um, with that extrusion. I mean, it is just a very well-equipped trailer as you look down the top rail too, you're gonna to notice we put a lot of button lights on it. You know, dress this trailer up. A lot of customers want more lights. You've got your LED awning lights above each ramp going into it. And then as we walk in here again, we have this side ramp on a six foot front tack. Now, side ramps can be done on front tack rooms. We need a minimum of a five foot front tack just for the proper bracing and framing that we need. Uh, but this is customer feedback. We were building some of these 30 footers with a five foot front tack and a 25 foot stall. And a customer actually made an upgrade and got into a newer one with a six foot. And he said, yes, I have that extra foot in there, but everything just fits a little bit better. Uh, you know, their upright boxes or blower carts, fan carts, portable generators, all those type of items. He said, boy, it just fits having that extra foot. I'd rather have in that tack room for that reason and still have that 24 foot stall area. A couple new things that we've done. If you saw our trailer last year, you noticed this gray rubber flooring. Uh, this has become very, very popular. We're incorporating it quite a bit on even the horse trailers now. But, you know, one of it, again, customer feedback. There was a customer that built a trailer and they said, we do not want carpet up in the nose because we don't have to crawl up there and try to vacuum that stuff out. It gets down in there, it can stain it, it holds that kind of smell the, uh, within the carpet. So we've gone to this gray rubber uh, flooring. We've done this on the deck, on the drop wall, and on the floor. Uh, just really easy to clean. It's not like stuff's getting underneath mats. Again, you don't have to worry about that carpet. You've got a fold-up gate right here. This is the same <laughs> extrusion that they use on the actual trailer itself. So really heavy duty and stout there, but folds down out of the way, flush against the gooseneck drop wall. Over here on driver's side is going to be a breaker box. And then it's also got an inverter uh, as well, uh, excuse me, a converter. So we can actually plug in whether it's to an external power source or again into that uh, portable generator. And it's actually gonna charge up our 12 volt battery as well. But this uh, breaker box, keep in mind, we'll visit a little bit more about this when we get in the stall area, but we wanted to get you guys some power on board this trailer. We understand a lot of shows are going to show off the trailer. You're doing a lot more off the trailer itself, so having some flexibility and some options there, we'll walk you through that a little bit. On the gooseneck drop wall, we did a partial boot box. This is an 18 inch. So again, for some smaller items, you know, right now we've got a box for the combo lock. Our actual 30 amp cord is in there, but this is a really good place to throw some smaller items as they might move in transit. Uh, look, again, showing off the trailer, maybe you can throw the kids' boots change of uh, you know footwear in there you can hang their clothes right up above here with this clothes rod 
so they can hop into this front tack room go ahead and get changed for you know actually going into the ring if they'd like to um, but again just another area to store some smaller items we like this 18 inch boot box and the reason why is your bigger uh, water buckets will fit in here to where if you go with the 12 inch because of this framework they won't actually set down in these so that's why we like going with the 18 inch and we only go partial way across just because we want to keep that opening uh, by the side ramp a little bit more that way if you do bring in those big boxes and those blower carts those type of items there you're not dealing with that boot box right there in the way but it also works as a great step to actually jump into the gooseneck area and then here we've got a airliner track that goes all the way across and and we understand the boot boxes right here but what we didn't want is we didn't want to cut this airline track right here in the middle and maybe have kind of a, a sharp point right here so we just said hey let's just extend it all the way this is great because you can get some different items uh, to actually lock in here some o-rings so you can ratchet strap some items directly to this wall if you want uh, but you've got that ab ability to move them anywhere you want along that that actual airliner track there now there's a box right up above here as well this here a lot of people ask what this is when we get to shows <clears throat> this flips up it's on a gas shock but this will house four 24 inch fans motor down so you can get your motors off the deck of the trailer itself get them up out of the way it kind of secures them so they're not moving around in transit uh, but it's actually better on the coils too um, when you flip them over on the cage and that that motor's actually bouncing on it it's not as good so if you flip them this way and slide them up uh, it's got this heavy uhmw plastic right here so the fans will slide really easily for you this is a great place to keep your show sticks over here to the right hand side on your gooseneck deck or keep an old one because as you start grabbing you're going to be able to grab your first couple fans right here but then as as you start working forward you can actually use your show stick to catch the cage and start pulling them back towards you so it's a lot easier as far as that's concerned now we've got more stuff here on this partition wall as well so we carpeted this entire partition wall back here we put more of those big hooks for you above that is a tray that's going to store our plexiglass for our upper air gaps on this trailer that we'll talk about when we get to the outside but you've, again you've got more hooks here to hang those bigger items airliner track that matches the same height as what we saw on that gooseneck deck same thing you can go ahead and get some different you know o-rings to actually secure items to it you can actually jump on amazon buy a pack of 10 20 of them really cheap and just bring them in but again it's nice that they can adjust all the way across so again one other item because we have dual doors we have the side ramp and then we've got a door coming in on driver's side now <clears throat> i am a big advocate for having a second entry way into this tack room besides just the ramp and the reason why is because if that ramp gets shut and someone's in here they cannot get out of this trailer so I like the door on driver's side. It's also easy if you have to pull off the road, you know, ramps on curbside, that door's on, on street side, so it's easier to kind of sneak in and out with traffic. Uh, but I like having that. Whether we do that door or a partition door on the actual wall going into the stall area. But again, customer feedback is a switch there is how we always used to do it for these lights on the inside. So we have a switch there, but you get to a show, get home, get somewhere where you need to hop in here and you have stuff piled in here. Well, it's really hard to get over there to that light switch. So we went in and put a secondary switch right up above the side ramp on the, on the top rail, get it up out of the way. But that way, when you drop this ramp, you can reach up here and turn these LED lights on here. We have one on each door, you know, above it. And then we've got one up in the gooseneck as well. So plenty of light coverage in here. And you'll also notice the white sheeting on the inside here. And we have to line and insulate, you know, or line the inside of these uh, tack rooms with this polished extrusion and these polished stainless sheets because if you throw something up into the nose of this trailer and it hits the inside of that sheeting, it's glaring from the outside. So we want to protect that outside uh, sheets as far as that's concerned on the outside. So that's why we go ahead and we actually line the inside of that tack room but again that tack room is a great setup again it's evolved so much from just a four foot with a with a tack door walking in here to doing these side ramps on these bigger tack 
options so we can get in and out of there. We understand you're gonna carry a lot of stuff with you. So let's have the capability to go ahead and, and have a little bit more room. And these ramps are really easy to go ahead and open and shut. They've got really good springs, so when it gets up to the trailer, it wants to actually suck into it. Uh, but again, you're, if you're dragging some younger kids with you, they've got the ability to open and close these up. Now, when we get to this stall area, one thing we did is on this trailer here, we shifted our ramp back. So normally this, this stall ramp's right about here, but we opted to shift it back. Again, a lot of customer feedback on that. Some, some customers like it shifted back for the ease of getting cattle in and out. One of the other reasons, is when this ramps up here, you know, we can't get as much airflow in this very first stall. So by shifting it back, now we can get these upper air gaps, this lower air gap, get a little bit more air, you know, be directly behind the tack room into this stall area for the cattle. So that's become a real popular option is actually shifting this ramp back. Uh, we do have uh, some versions in inventory where it's shifted forward. It's just completely a personal preference. It's just a location type item. So nothing really changes price or, or options as far as that's concerned. But then as we get into the stall area here, we got a lot of cool stuff going on. One of the very first things as you come in, just look at the floor. <clears throat> so on this one here, since it's one of our display trailers, we went ahead and sent this trailer to worm flooring, put a permanent rubber matted floor in here. We did the black and the gray on this type of option. Black is standard. It's a dollar more a square foot to go with a, a different color. But on this one here, we just opted to do some, some gray rubber mixed into it. Now we don't have to pull mats on this trailer ever. You can literally just power wash it out. It doesn't allow that urine to get down into the floor itself. Uh, so, you know, normally we have rubber mats, but on this one here with it being a show trailer, we opted to do the worm flooring on it. Now, a lot of stuff going on in here as well. One thing we like to do on some of these trailers is doing this rubber matting. This is kind of off of our horse trailers, but doing this rubber mat on this first kind of stall. That way, you know, we're not having cattle rub directly onto that uh, aluminum there. You know, maybe you're drag dragging some charlets or, you know, some shorthorn, something like that that's got some white into it. You don't want them rubbing against there, maybe getting some of that aluminum coming off on the actual cattle themselves. Uh, so we like to do this rubber across the front there tie rails you've got a low tie rail kind of one in the middle and then one in between your air gaps so you've got the ability to tie cattle about anywhere you want uh, with this one here so again we're in a, a 24 foot stall area two traveling gates so again as these trailers and these models have evolved it used to be one traveling gate with the, maybe about a 10 foot kind of rail uh, and then you had a fixed gate at the back but then we started building trailers with two traveling gates, three traveling gates, because everybody wanted the flexibility to do whatever they wanted to for these stall setups. So in this instance here, we did the two traveling gates. When it's built with two traveling gates, I actually shift this door back. We'll take a look at where the ramp's located, but in this instance, it's not a problem, it's shifted back. But you have location to actually slide at both gates, or just one, if you'd like, right up against this partition wall. So. Right now we've got three stalls. We can shrink that down to two. We can have one if we'd like, whatever you, as far as just the setup and whatever you prefer uh, with this two traveling gate system here. Now, I'm gonna take a step back. We'll look at this first traveling gate. If you've seen a lot of our videos, seen a lot of the inventory, seen a lot of these models, this is a little bit different. This is a jail bar style here. So you see these vertical bars. Again, customer feedback, getting more airflow to the cattle. Uh, it's a different look to it as well. Um, I really like it on these swing gates. <clears throat> the sliders, you just gotta be a lot more cautious because you're gonna have dual kind of jail bars side by side. So when you slide them, you just gotta be cautious of it and watch your hands as far as that's concerned. But these jail bars really do allow for a lot more airflow. We do this on a lot of our horse trailers, the dividers themselves. Uh, 48 inch swing, no threshold. So the cattle do not have to step over anything which is a really nice feature right there. I'm gonna show you how easy these gates are to move as well. I'll slide this one forward. It's real simple, you just break it off the wall. Kind of get about balanced in the middle and then it slide it right forward. I'm gonna take it all the way up and I'll show you 
So the system that they have is, is we've got these pins and they actually go around the posts themselves. And there is a lock as well, so you can flip that over. And again, if you have somebody messing with it, they can't get it open. But very easy to use because of the track system that Cimarron uses off of the ceiling itself. A lot of manufacture, other manufacturers will have rails, you know, actually on the sidewall. So as you get into door openings, you have to be cautious of it. Uh, you have to be very balanced. If you get out of way, they can kind of get wedged on you a little bit. But if, if you throw some more bedding down in here, the ability to be able to move those gates one way or the other, kind of manipulate where they're at when you go to slide them, makes a world of difference. But that system works so well by having that slide. Again, you saw how easy it was to move these gates. So now we've got two stall areas because I slid that one up. So again, you can really manipulate these all you want. Get running a cow-calf pair, you can isolate them into a smaller stall. Maybe you got a bull where you're dragging some heifers, you need to keep them separate. Why waste a 10-foot stall on somebody um, when we can shrink that down a little bit? So again, a lot of flexibility as far as this concerned. We run our rails almost clear to the back. We keep them a couple feet off the back. If you wanted to add a third gate, very simple. We order it and get it in here and it's easy to install because it's still off of that, that same track system itself. Now, this is gonna be a standard feature, sounds like on the 24 models, but we like to taper our wheel wells in here. So we don't like 90 degree angles. So we actually kind of close off these little, almost kind of triangle section there. Uh, but again, we don't want any 90 degree angles, you know, sharp points, anything like that. So we go in and, and again, sounds like that's gonna be a standard option on the 24 models. You're gonna have a little bit more length linked to this wheel well and I'll show you when we get to the outside because this is a spread axle setup. Um, but again, by having these gates and doing different things, again, it's gonna give you so much flexibility uh, compared to the old versions uh, where you have a fixed gate. So these setups have become so popular. We're doing it even on, on using trailers for guys on cow-calf operations. Uh, we see it on stock combos. Guys like to incorporate these gates in those as well but a fantastic setup there as well. Now, we'll talk about construction a little bit. The floor on a Cimarron is a 12 inch deck that locks in high and low. So it's tongue and groove, extremely strong. You have four inch centers that run the, across the, the trailer itself and the entire length. So imagine hoof size of a heifer, a steer, a bull, whatever, wherever they're standing on this floor, they're standing on a support beam. So that's a real great indication on how well a trailer is built. Crawl on the ground, look at the floor, and as you see those centers start spreading apart, I guarantee you it's not as high quality and it's probably a lot cheaper trailer, um, which you know, could in turn to you having to buy a new trailer a little bit more frequently as far as that's concerned. So really strong floor. You've got these really strong upright posts that Cimarron uses. These are almost a perfect square but it's the same amount of aluminum that you're gonna notice on these roof bows. This is what the competition uses a, uh, quite a bit on their side posts. So for example, if you take a 20 foot stick of this, this rectangular piece, it'll wobble like a noodle. And if you take a 20 foot stick of this on the side wall posts here, it's almost like a pencil, it's one fluid motion. So a lot stronger upright posts. They put them on the roof because one, we want a little bit of a bow to it, but also we cap it off with this insulated roof. So that is a half inch thick honeycomb design. I can walk on this roof, I can jump on it, it will not dent. It is really strong and durable. More importantly, what it does for the stall area as far as a comfort level. So it keeps the stall area about 20% cooler than aluminum sheeted roofs. And as we're traveling, especially in the winter months, trying to keep cattle cool, that makes a world of difference. When you go see us at shows, you will find us in the heat of the day, typically migrated into the trailers themselves because it's cooler. Even if we have an up, easy up tent outside in the shade, it'll be cooler in here because of that insulated roof. And then you've got two-way roof vents as well, so we can again manipulate a lot of the airflow throughout here. They can open backwards as well, so if you're traveling in winter months and you wanna kinda of get rid of that that warmer air as it rises, you can actually release it and get it away from the cattle as well. But again, this will make such a big difference. The very first ones that uh, Kurt Steerwalt was pulling were six, eight tall. 
because again, we were trying to get the heat away from cattle and then we realized with that insulated roof, we didn't need to drag that extra height if we didn't need to. So that's why you see a lot of the 6'4 tall trailers, especially in our inventory. So a lot going on in here. It's a really cool setup with these no threshold traveling gates, the jail bar style gates as well. We actually like these, these 48 inch swings. We actually kind of had to reverse the way we were thinking on the hinges. You know, most stock trailers were used to everything hinging and, and swinging off of passenger side to where on this one, we swapped it over to driver side. It's just easier flowing when you're bringing cattle off or on to this trailer from the side ramp itself by going into different stalls and bringing cattle off. So that's why we swapped the actual hinges on this setup here. Again, side ramp here, real easy to pick up. And again, as it goes into the trailer, it'll, these big springs on the bottom here just want to suck it into it itself. You're going to notice that the slower air gap, <clears throat> nice and big, <clears throat> it has the ability to fold these up and down. We like these rather than the actual plexiglass. And the reason why is with the plexiglass inserts, it's a smaller air gap, so we get more airflow to the cattle. but. In these type of scenarios where it's maybe a real cold morning and it's gonna heat up during the day, you want it kind of shut up in the morning so it's real easy to have this shut up, stop somewhere and just drop these rather than pulling plexiglass out, figuring out where it goes. Um, so again, this is a great setup. It's really functional and real easy to use. You can just flip them up and down very easily. Now, plexiglass. So we have this upper air gap with two rows of plexiglass. All Cimarron stock trailers are built with this track already into it, so if you don't have plexiglass, you can get it and add it to it. But in these type of scenarios, if we go to pull this plexiglass out and you saw that storage tray up front, I want you to carry some painter's tape or masking tape and a Sharpie. And I want you to take out lower side passenger, tape it all together and write it on there, put it up in that tray. Do the same thing for the upper, same thing for the driver's side, same thing for the rear gate. Because when you go to put these pieces back in, it's going to save a lot of hassle, a lot of headache on figuring out where each piece goes because there's some different sizes. Everything from where these tracks are on these type of scenarios forward is four foot. So they try to do them in four foot sections or smaller to also fit in that tray as well. But it, believe me, again, it'll save a lot of hassle as far as that's concerned. Exterior tie rail high and low. So you've got the ability if you need to, to go ahead and tie out here. Um, you can tie cattle to the side of the trailer, have their heads up a little bit more. If you get to somewhere where you actually want to tie out, um, you can actually do the, the lower tie rail. There's uh, tie rails on each side of the trailer as far as that's concerned. They also do build a piece that will go over wheel wells, so you can create a little bit more tie out space if you want. This is a small feature right here, this amber turn signal. So we do this on a lot of our eight wide trailers, longer trailers, all our living quarters, because this works as another indicator light. So a marker light for you to see, but this will blink when your flasher comes on. It'll indicate when your brakes are engaged. As these trailers get bigger, longer, it's nice to have this just to be able to, hey, show somebody, hey, I am trying to get over. Can you help me out a little bit? Uh, but we, we do this quite a bit on a lot of our, our again, wider and bigger trailers themselves. Now there's a good look at that spread axle. So the spread axle, it's a 12 inch spread. What we do is when you do this spread, I think it gives a different look to the trailer, a different finish. It will take off more tongue weight because now we've spread these axles so we're not getting as much tongue weight on the actual truck itself. Uh, the pull itself is gonna actually be more similar to a triple axle, even though we're running tandem. And then what we've got here, again, air ride suspension. That is the most important thing we're gonna talk about right now. So air ride suspension is an absolute game changer. Talk to anybody that's dragging one of these new air ride trailers and believe me, their response will be, I will never own another one without it. What it does for our cattle and just the way that they actually travel makes a massive difference. We spend so much time, so much money, so it's a, it's a massive investment. We want these cattle to get to a show and compete at the highest level. Uh, these cattle will get onto these air ride trailers. They'll lay down like they're in a barn. I mean, it is an unbelievable ride for them. 
You can actually peel some front end of uh, travel time off on an actually going to a show, you know, maybe you need that extra day for recovery time, you might be able to peel a little bit of that off. That's additional cost you being gone, additional hotels, additional labor, additional meals. It, it, again, it is an upgrade, but believe me, once you space it out on how many shows you go to, how many head of cattle, uh, those type of scenarios for trips is concerned, you'll easily pay for this air ride uh, upgrade very, very quickly. Now, the other thing is what's really cool is if we have an issue with a compressor, a line, a bag, it'll set down on rubber torsion axles that have this shock kit underneath it as well. We'll have that on display for a stock show uh, cut out so you can see how that system actually works and how it's set up. But it sets down on a rubber torsion axle and you can go where you need to and then have that addressed. Old air ride systems, you couldn't move the trailer. Now, with the air ride, we recommend when you're loading and unloading, go ahead and drop it because it actually has the trailer two and a half inches lower to the ground. So our ramps aren't as steep getting in, our steps aren't as big getting in and out, whether it's the back or into the, the other side of the tack room. Um, but once it's set down, you know, again, that's when you load and unload. And then when you go to leave, that's when you air it up. Again, the Alcoa rim, 17 and a half inch rims, 18 ply Continental tires, electric brakes on this setup. Uh, again, nice heavy duty running gear underneath here. These are two 8,000 pound axles. Again, the air ride suspension. I cannot say enough good things about that. Uh, we've got some customer testimonies out there on, on what they feel the benefits is the air ride. And again, their response is I won't own another one without it. So again, these fold ups, really simple to use, flipping them up and down. As so we get to the back here, eight wide, we've got a couple eight inch LED lights up at the top. So you have some additional load lights at the back. A lot of interior lights you saw in there. All those switches are right here at the back. Now inside that side uh, ramp as well, we did switches like we did in that front tack room for the stall area and then that passenger side. So you have secondary switches there. So if you're getting in and out of that trailer, again, you have those switches in that top rail. You have a big gate slider on this. We actually do a 36 inch wide slider because it being eight wide, we can actually make this slider a little bit bigger, uh, give you a bigger opening if you're having to bump up against somebody in a parking lot, something like that. Uh, moving cattle from one trailer to the next by having that bigger opening. If you're getting, you know, maybe moving some bulls, big bread heifer, big fat steer, having that opening is a little bit nicer to have that nice and wide there. Got a slam latch on this, so it's got it for safety purposes. You can actually go ahead and slam that shut. Now, as you can see, just getting in that stall area here at the back, you'll notice there's that rail I was telling you about. So that rail runs almost a couple feet off the back. So if you wanted to add additional gate to this, that would be very easy to do. There's a good look at those LED lights in there. Now you'll notice too that there's some outlets in that top rail. So there's gonna be a few here on this passenger side, that full length of that stall area. And then we put one here at driver's side rear and the top rail as well. So I showed you up front there that 30 amp breaker package in that front tack room. So what you can do is you can actually plug in your portable generator or another external power source, and you can run maybe some fans in that stall area. Maybe you need to actually, maybe you're fitting off of the trailer itself. You can run some clippers, those type of items in that stall area right there. And it's nice to have those outlets in that top rail. And that's again, based off of that 30 amp package that I showed you up at the front. One other small thing, kind of like those amber turn signals, is backup lights. So we're doing a lot of backup lights on our trailers now for inventory purposes. And the reason why is, you know, if you think about it, your backup lights on your truck are so far away to the back of this trailer. And we understand you are going to be getting to shows or getting home late at night and you want to have some light coverage. It's nice to have those backup lights when you throw that truck in reverse and kind of see what you're, what you're working with behind you. Again, same thing. There's your lower air gaps on those gas shocks. So again, real easy. Open and close. There's your tie rails, high and low. And then you do have an access gate 
here going into the stall area if you need for some reason. We went ahead and put a, a fold up step on these eight wide trailers. Believe me, that's the way to go. It makes that transition so much easier getting in and out of this stall area. And then directly in front of it is gonna be that door, that man door going into that front tack room. Same thing, having that step there, that's a difference of about eight inches from that step to that bottom uh, door frame there. So, you know, especially smaller kids or you're packing stuff in and out, it's nice and an easier transition going that, that with those fold up steps. We really try to incorporate those you know, throughout the trailers, especially when we get to these eight wide, um, get into the tack room. And then there's a good look at that polished, you know, stainless sheeting, the polished extrusion, absolutely beautiful trailer. Again, this is a 2023 Cimarron Steerwalt Signature Series, 30 foot air ride, two traveling gates, power package, spread axle air ride. We can go on and on and on about all the options on this. I'm gonna give you the stock number on this trailer for reference, if you're interested in it, you wanna build off of it, you wanna see what else we have, you can reference this number to anybody. That number is 5N221024. But we're really excited to show you this trailer. We're really excited to show you all the other trailers that we'll have down on display at the upcoming National Western Stock Show. So definitely come up and see us up in the exhibit hall. We're usually on the west end down there, but come check this trailer out, come check everything else out. Uh, we do take trade-ins, so whether you're upgrading, maybe needing to downsize, we can help you out there. Financing's available, and delivery is an option as well. We can get it right to your doorstep. So give us a call. Anyone on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in and hope to see you at the stock show.